Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here and answering a question Wall Street doesn't even want you asking, how many stocks should you own? Because not knowing that answer keeps you dependent on the so-called experts for those stock ideas and advice but the truth will truly set you free. Not only will you see that you don't need to pay the advisor fees and commissions, but you'll be set free to make your own investing decisions. Before we get started though, you know I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now see if this sounds familiar. You've just turned on CNBC or clicked through to YouTube for your daily feast of stock picks. You chow down on a buffet of ideas, five, 10, even 20 stock picks in an hour. And now you've heard the expression biting off more than you can chew? Well, investing in more than 20 stocks is like trying to stuff an entire double quarter pounder with cheese in your mouth all at once. All you get is your third heart attack and the creeping sense that things are getting a little out of control. And that is exactly what Wall Street wants. Because nation, investing has become an entertainment industry. Investing is no longer about making you money, it's about keeping you entertained. Everyone from TV to online, even right here on YouTube, they make their money on ad dollars, which means they need you addicted to stock picking. Like that junkie in need of a fix, they need you coming back for that next hot stock. They do this by confusing you with so much conflicting information as possible, keeping you scared and dependent on that information. But it wasn't always like this. Research by Bloom and Crockett in the early 70s found that a third of investors held just one stock and half had two or fewer in their portfolios. Now, I'll reveal how many stocks the average investor now holds, but I wanna get your opinion on this as well. How many individual stocks do you own in your portfolio? So not including ETFs, and do you feel like you're able to keep up with each one? Scroll down and let me know in the comments below, how many stocks do you feel is too many? More recent research from the Federal Reserve shows that the average investor now holds upwards of 30 stocks in their portfolio. Worse still, as this data from the New York Stock Exchange shows investors are trading in and out of their stocks like never before. This shows the average holding period for stocks as high as eight years back in the 60s, and even until the 1980s, investors held on to their stocks for four years on average. That is long-term investing, giving stocks the time to grow and even though most investors still say they invest long-term, that number is now down to five and a half months. Investors are now holding their stocks for less than half a year. And the problem with that 180 degree shift is that holding 30 or 40 individual stocks means you're probably not doing the research you need to on any one of them. You're spending maybe half an hour max to look at the company, half of which is spent online reading some expert's analysis. And you're definitely not able to keep up to date on the news and those earnings reports for every stock in your portfolio. Nation, Wall Street has got us right where it wants us, flipping from one stock to the other, salivating over the next hot stock pick and paying them for more. Now, when we look at actual research on how many stocks to own, and most of this is built around the idea that minimum number of stocks that you need to be completely diversified. So the least number of stocks you should own in a portfolio so that your wealth doesn't jump up and down just too much from one single company. The most famous of this research is by Evans and Archer, published by the Journal of Finance in 1968. They found that you can get as much diversification as you need and spread that risk around in as few as 10 stocks. This graph shows the standard deviation or the measure of portfolio risk on the left side. Think of this as your freak out measure because it's how much your portfolio jumps up and down. On the bottom is the number of stocks you own. So obviously if you just own one or two stocks, there is a huge risk that your portfolio can crash with changes in either of those two stocks. That's why this company risk part is so high on the left side of the chart. As you start adding more stocks though, the risk that any one company can derail your portfolio gets smaller and smaller. Eventually, you've only got maybe five or 10% of your money in any single stock, and you only have that market risk. So what this is showing you is that no matter how many stocks you own, you're always gonna have a little bit of market risk. If the market crashes, it's gonna drag everything down with it, but but you can reduce that company risk to almost nothing with as little as 10 to 20 stocks. Nation, as much as I love to talk about stocks and we all wanna find the next Apple or Amazon, but honestly, most of the time, it is just not worth it. You wanna be enjoying your time with your family or your friends, not slumped over some cash flow statement trying to pick stocks. With 20 or 30 stocks or more, considering you need to read through those earnings reports and the financials every three months on each, it just is not realistic for the average investor. That's why we talk about the core satellite strategy here on the channel. Uh, this is where I invest in 10 to 15 individual stocks and then three to five funds. So with about 65 or 70% of my portfolio in those ETFs, those funds, that's all the diversification I need. With just a few ETFs and index funds, I get exposure to hundreds of stocks, 
bonds, and real estate companies, so I'm covered on every part of the economy. Now, if you need ideas on which index funds to buy, we recently looked at the five most popular funds out there and the only one you need for your portfolio, so look for that video linked below. Now, with the remaining 30% that I have in those 10 to 15 stock picks, I get the opportunity for those higher returns. I've got maybe 3% of my money in each, so I'm not overly exposed to any problems at one single company, but, but I still have that chance to pick some strong stocks that are gonna do well. Now that last part is very important, so I wanna repeat it. You should never have more than 5% of your money in any single stock. And Nation, the problem here is that investors should get too excited about their stocks. They put a bunch of money in it and maybe the shares fall a little bit, so the investor buys more shares in that dollar cost average strategy. They keep adding more shares and pretty soon you've got one stock that is 20 or 30% of your portfolio. You cannot get emotional about your stocks. You can like the company, you can think it sells a great product and has a strong future, but, but the second you get emotional about it, well, they say love is blind and that will lose your money in stocks. You become blind to the other side of the story, that, that news that might tip you off that the company is in trouble or, or developing trends that could mean that lost advantage over its competitors. Then what happens if the company bankrupts? Or even if it doesn't though, where is your portfolio going to be if that stock is just dead money for years? You have to keep a limit on the amount you have in any one single stock. I like to keep mine at 5% or lower of my portfolio, but you might decide a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but I'd keep it right around that area for protection. And that core satellite strategy works perfectly here on so many levels. Because you've only got 30% or so of your money in individual stocks, you don't need to be chasing the next hot stock idea. With 3% of your money in each, that's only 10 stocks you need to research and keep up with. With this strategy, you also know that you won't destroy your portfolio with any single stock. You've got only maybe 30% of your money in a handful of stocks, so that's three to maybe 5% in each at the most. And you can still dollar cost average, investing more in each stock, but, but over time as you invest regularly. Now that's gonna grow your portfolio and you won't have to worry about timing the market. And because it's a limited number of stocks, you're also limited to only the very best, like, like the ones we're highlighting in our Just One Stock series. We're covering the very best stocks in each of nine topics, so perfect for that 10 stock portfolio. So look for the links to those in the video description below. Click on the video to the right for the one index fund every investor needs. One fund for market returns to take the stress out of investing. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.